thank you for uh, introduction. As Rolly said, I was a CTO of Options Express and I was working as a CTO of Media Ocean. So my passion is trading. I've been at Options Express when we started the company. We were encouraged to trade so we understand how the self-directed investors the thought process and how to structure your trade correctly. So since for the past 15 years I've been a trader, I also for the past two years been teaching trading for TradeSpoon subscribers and how to use TradeSpoon technology. So I'm also a mentor and a teacher and for the past 15 years I've been managing my own money and kind of running a friends and family fund and uh, managing money and putting the technology to help me find uh, trading opportunities is kind of uh, the passions that TradeSpoon allows me to combine into one. Uh, so some of the disclosures, uh, options does involve risk, information in this presentation is provided solely for general education and information purposes only, any strategies discussed including example using actual securities and price data are strictly for illustrative and educational purposes only. Before I jump into the TradeSpoon algorithms and the explanation of the, some of the concepts, key concepts behind TradeSpoon system, I want to talk about the general idea of why when we were encouraged to trade at um, Options Express when we started, and most self-directed investors, some of the difficulties that we are uh, facing. When we started Options Express and I started to trade in, I quickly realized that Sometimes you can be correct on the direction of the market, and sometimes you can be also correct on the timing of the market. But when you have a volatility like we had in the market for the past two weeks, where VIX jumped from 12 to 30 and then jumped back to 16, you could be correct on the direction and on the timing of the trade, but because of the short-term volatility, your stop, stop orders can get triggered and you can lose the position and you can lose money on the position even though you were right and that creates kind of this cycle where you instead of managing your positions you're speculating and mismanaging your trades because you either misallocated the amount of capital that you have for any given trade you put in 10 20 percent of your positions into any given trade or if you lose money on a given trade you try to recover or repair that position or that trade by doubling down or investing more money into a bad trade. So one of the main reasons, we had several presenters on TradeSpoon, one of the main reasons why self-directed investors lose money is because they don't have a trading plan, a written down trading plan where they can record reasons why they get in or get out of the positions and they cannot go back historically to their trades and learn or adjust their system in order to make sure that they can be correct on the market. So, with that in mind, we build a trade spoon system to quickly using quantitative models to be able to analyze stock market and different sectors and assign different scores for each of the stocks that we have. So, I'm going to bring up trade spoon here, and if you trade spoon subscriber under my tools, you basically see different tools that we have. And trade spoon bulls is kind of a core. Um, model that allows us to quickly rate, rank stocks. So here we see, if you run TradeSpoon Bulls under my tools, TradeSpoon Bulls, you can see all of the stocks with long term rating of 9 and 10. What does that mean? 10 means we're very bullish on the stock on a scale of 1 through 10 based on their fundamental and technical uh, analysis. We look at the discounted cash flow analysis, we look at the intrinsic value of the stock, we look at the earnings consistency for the past 25 years, and we are assigning value 9 to 10. Then we're looking at the short-term trend. Short-term trend kind of looks at the seasonality of the stock and underlying options data and tries to use an implied volatility, historical price data, and historical earnings data to ascertain where, what is the probability of a stock being higher in the next 50 days. And as we trade in options, statistically we found that the best time, the best time horizon is 50 to 75 days till options expiration to trade a stock because it has enough premium in the options that even if the stock doesn't go in your direction or stays the same, you can still make money by selling the option premium. So you can run the scan and say, well, long-term rating 9 through 10, 
meaning you know using fundamental technical analysis that we have we want only bullish stocks and short term trend we want a probability of stock being higher than it is now and we also want the 9 and 10 if you click on gold then right away you can actually see the results and for every sector that we have for uh, semiconductors for software sector for financial sector for healthcare sector we find the best stocks we see statistics year to day change today's change so support and resistance and we also have long term rating and a short term trading so what we're trying to find is the best stocks in any given sector based on long-term and short-term trend. And this short-term trend then, if you want to visualize it actually, we just released a new seasonal chart. So if you type in all trade, for example, and you look at the annual seasonal cycle, you can actually see, you can actually predict where the stock is going to be going into November, December. And that's what this short-term trend actually means. We look at the data for the past 25 years, and we, for every given month, we try to find out where the stock is relative to other seasonal cycles. You know, how the ultra behaves in November compared to July. And we look at the 25 years worth of data, we assign index to it. And then by using these seasonal charts and assigning a score based on the correlation number will try to see what the stock is going to do in the next 50 days. So here, if you look at Ultra, the idea is that it will follow the trend that it created for the past 25 years, and the Ultra is going to go no higher in November and higher December. And the higher the correlation number, the higher number that we assign. So that's visually what the short-term trends that we create a transpond is R is the probability based on the seasonality, based on the earnings for the past 25 years, based on the price action during earnings season. What is the probability of the stock being higher than it is now in the next 50 days? So the research that we do at Tracepoon first starts kind of a top to the bottom approach. We are looking at the macro and microeconomic conditions. We've seen there is, has been a short-term volatility in the market for the past two weeks. S&P sold off, Russell 2000 sold off 10 to 13 percent. Now the stock market has rebounded back. So we're looking at the charts and we try to run everything in terms of statistics. So here, you know, you can look at the S&P chart and I'm going to try to do some annotations so we can see it. So Throughout our research and throughout the, today's presentation, we try to capture statistically losing historical volatility and implied volatility where the stock market is. So we've seen in the past two weeks how the stock market has been sold off and it moved lower than the, Bollinger, than the lower band of the Bollinger Bands. So we look at the Bollinger Band which is here, and we're looking at the two standard deviations away. What is the two standard deviation away? Two standard deviation away meaning that between the lower band and the upper band of the Bollinger Band, there's only 95% chance, meaning there is 95% chance that the stock will move between these upper and lower bands. But we've seen that in the past two weeks for several days, actually for a week, stock market has actually violated the lower Bellinger band and we have an outlier. And the idea is here you have to look at the statistical analysis based on the previous data or based on the future data and find out what is the probability of an index or a stock being in a certain price range. And that's what we do at Tracepoint. We look at the statistics, we look at the previous data, and we look at the future data to try to see what are the odds of success for a given stock or an index. So we've seen how the Based on Bolgian band, S&P have violated the lower band, and now it's settled right around the 100-day moving averages, somewhere in the middle. And now the idea that the stock market, you know, it can go, it will probably retrace back to 2048. By the end of the year, you have one camp. The other camp, you know, you might have a, a short sell-off here. But no matter what, if you are trading in, statistically speaking, if you're in the mean, you know, you want to probably adjust your positions because it's a flip of a coin where the stock market is going to go from here. But once stock market is at the lower Bollinger Band or an upper Bollinger Band, then you can look at the statistics and figure out where what is the likelihood of stock being higher or lower at a certain price point. And when you overlay it with your long-term conviction on the stock, tens, then 
obviously when s p goes to the lower band of the Bollinger Band, and you look at a stock like Expedia, Apple, or Gilead Science, if your long-term conviction is bullish, then if you buy into the weakness, or you use whatever the technical indicators you, you use to find the trend or reversion to mean, then you can structure your trade with the high probability of success. So let's talk about this, you know, statistics, probability of success, and return on capital. Those are kind of you can see throughout uh, TradeSpoon site. So let's go back to TradeSpoon. Uh, when we provide our trade recommendation, we have one trade recommendation a day. If you look at the, let's say, Micron, for every trade recommendation, we look at the volatility change. This is our IV rank. This is the relative terms implied volatility now compared to the past 52 weeks. Then we calculate return on capital and probability of success. So for every trade that we recommend, we actually specify what those numbers are. So let's jump into math behind these numbers and why they are important when you are looking at the trade. So if you look at the trade spoon, we, in order to avoid the volatility and not getting stopped out during the past two weeks, the best way to do it is using options because the options allows you to have a certain maximum loss and certain maximum gain. And when you trade spreads, it allows you to capture the volatility. So you know that as implied volatility increases, as the weeks go up, we're allowed to sell options. We take more conservative approach. We don't sell naked options, naked puts and naked calls because it's more of a speculative approach. And it takes years of experience to master that, even though probability of success is higher when you sell naked options. But if the trade goes against you, unless you manage it appropriately, you can lose a lot of money. So to keep it simple, a trade spoon, we advocate in using option spreads. And in terms of heightened volatility, we are do, we're selling the premium. So if you're bullish on the stock, and this is a stock chart, uh, this is a profit loss chart of the Apple when uh, we took this uh, screenshot. The idea that if you think that Apple is going to keep going up, uh, and it's you know it reached after the earnings reached 104 level, then you can buy uh, call spreads. You can buy debit call spreads if the volatility is low. But if the volatility is high, you can. Uh, do a bull put spread, which is you can sell a credit put spread. And the idea that if you never look at the profit and loss chart, and you know what, while I am talking, it would be great towards the end of the session, I'm going to talk about the more advanced concepts. So if you guys don't mind, just type in how many, if you traded options before, and if yes, for how many years. And if you haven't traded options, just say, you know, never traded options. But if you never traded options or if you're new to options, you have to look at the profit and loss chart and you have to look at the probability of success chart. So if you're trading, if you're selling, if you're, you have a bullish view on a stock like Apple and TradeSpoon score is 10, gives you long-term conviction 10 on the stock, then the simplest strategy to utilize to capture the premium of heightened implied volatility is to sell credit put spread. And whether you sell a credit put spread or buy a debit call spread, profit loss chart always looks like this. As the stock price goes up and you achieve go higher strike price, you are making more money. And this is a profit loss. On the x-axis, you have a strikes or stock price. And as the stock price goes up, you're making more money. But as you can notice, unlike puts, or calls, there's a limited upside because you, the trade-off of withstanding the volatility and having maximum gain and maximum loss, and the fact that you're capping your profit once the stock goes to a certain price level, here is a 95, is that your strike prices defines your maximum gain and maximum loss. So the profit loss chart looks like this. And if you look at the probability of success, here's the bell-shaped curve, you want to be somewhere in this price range. Here. And the idea is that here, because this is 68% probability of success. Statistically speaking, one standard deviation is 68% probability of success. So you want the stock, you want to make money as long as the stock 
is between this price range. So unlike up stocks where the probability of success is 50-50, stock can go higher or lower, what options allows you to identify a range, looking at the Bollinger Bands or whatever the technical indicators you have. Looking at the statistical data, you can say, statistically speaking, based on historical volatility or implied volatility, what is the price range that the stock can be in the next 50 days? And as long as the stock is within this price range, you can make money. And that's kind of the beauty of the options, that when you trade options, your probability of success can be 68%, 80%. And as long as the stock within this price range, you don't have an outlier events, like we had you know, with S&P for the past two weeks, where we go beyond two standard deviation move. As long as you stay within this one standard deviation, price range, you can make money. And the way you do it, you do you buy, uh, you do spreads. So you can sell a put, so you can sell put at this price level and you can buy put to hedge yourself somewhere here. Or you can sell a call at this price range and buy a call here with the idea that as long as the stock doesn't go beyond one standard deviation move, you will make money. You can sell a put spread here if you're bullish on the stock, or if the stock, if you don't have an opinion about the stock and you want to sell both put spread and a call spread and capture the premium on both sides, then you can sell the strike price here. Okay, so here we're looking uh, at Alcoa, and Alcoa is currently been trading, at, at, at least when I took this uh, screenshot, at $16. So again, our long-term conviction is 8, and short-term trend is 7. That gives us a confidence, if the stock goes against you, that we can still hold the stock and exercise some kind of a repair strategy. So by having this long-term conviction, now we have to figure out which strike prices to use. And here at TradeSpoon, we basically provide you with the probability calculator. We look at the historical price action for the past 50 days, and we're finding one standard deviation move based on historical volatility. So at Alcoa, one standard deviation move is means $14.37 and $17.93. So going back to that bell-shaped curve, so there is 68% probability that the stock will be between $14.37 and $17.93 and using standard historical standard deviations. And we're applying implied volatility to see what is the probability of that event happening in the future, in the next 50 days. So once you have this long-term conviction where you're bullish on the stock, like I'll call, and you have a score of eight, if you have that view, what strike prices do you uh, trade? You can trade $14 or $14.50 or $15 stock. So if you sell 14 put, that means that you have only 16% chance of being wrong. So looking at the historical volatility and apply, uh, applying implied volatility using 50-day time range, so now we're looking at the December options, there's only 16% probability that the alcohol will be below $14.37. That means that 84% of the time you will make money by doing this trade. So by looking at pure statistics and also have a long-term conviction on the stock helps you to improve the odds of being correct on that trade. And here we're looking now at the live site. So if you look at the micron that we've recommended it, here's the probability of success is 61%. And if you look at the probability calculator, here's the micron statistics. Our long-term conviction is 10. Our short-term trend based on seasonality and based applied volatility and price action is 9. So we think that micron, there is a high likelihood that the stock is going to be higher between now and December expiration. And if you want to structure a trade, for more aggressive traders, you can sell the 26 strike, and there's 87% chance that you will make money. But if you're more conservative, or if, the, if you have a more conservative approach, then you can sell the 26 strike and also buy a 24 strike put to hedge yourself in case there is a sell-off in the market and you're, in, you're wrong. So again, 
in the example of Micron, when we recommended a trade, volatility change was 50%, meaning that implied volatility today versus implied volatility in the past 52 weeks is somewhere in the middle of that range. So we can either do a debit spread, which we decided to do SALT32 call, to have approximately, you know, one-to-one -one success, you know, uh, reward to risk ratio, because we took a more conservative approach, or we could have sold a put spread. And how do you know when to do what? I mean, you can always do a debit spread where you have to pay up front, or you can do a sell a credit spread where you receive premium up front. And the reason, and the way you know how to do that is based on the IV rank. So here's the chart of implied volatility of Western Digital, and you can see how the Western Digital has, the implied volatility has been between 20 and 45. So you look at the implied volatility chart for underlying stock, and if implied volatility is at its highest, so let's look at that chart, let's annotate. So if the implied volatility is at low, then here you would buy calls, buy call spread. But if the implied volatility is high, like it is here or here, then you would sell a put spread. Assuming you're bullish on the stock, and here we're doing, we're assuming we're bullish on the stock, so the idea is that implied volatility, you can see it goes from these peaks to the valley. And if implied volatility jumps, like we had last week, implied volatility for the most stocks were 100%, made 100% 50 move. That means it doubled, implied volatility sometimes doubled or tripled from its lowest point. When implied volatility expands, you want to sell option premium. And the most conservative way to do this, you either sell put spread if you're bullish on the stock, or you sell call spreads if you're bearish on the stocks. And that allows you to capture the premium of the options. Once implied volatility collapsed, like we have now, especially after the earnings, once Apple announced its earnings and market kind of settled in the range, implied volatility is low, then you do a debit spread and you buy options. And historically, options do have kind of a bad reputation sometimes, saying that you know 90% of the time, Option traders, self-directed investors, option traders actually lose money. Why does it happen? If anything, I kind of want you to guys uh, take away as from this um, presentation is that it is true that 90% of the time the option self-directed investors lose money trading options because if you look at the purely at probability of success, what most of the traders are doing especially when they're new to option, they are buying out of the money puts and calls. So if for Micron, Majority of the time, especially if implied volatility is high, if Micron is currently trading at $32, buying 32 call is expensive. So natural tendency is to buy something that is cheaper, so you buy 36 call, buy 38 call. But if you look at the statistics, if you look at the historical volatility that shows you the past performance, and if you look at the implied volatility that shows you supply and demand for options that expires in the future, kind of shows you forward-looking projections of where the stock is going to be, there's only 14% chance that the Micron will be above $38. So if there's only 14% chance that Micron is going to be above $38, people who are buying 38 calls, 90% of the time or 86% of the time, they will lose money. And that's what usually happens when people trade options. They either buy out of the money puts or they buy out of the money calls. And unless you have a strong opinion on a binary event, let's say you believe that Micron between now and December expiration, when they announce earnings will jump above 38. If you analyze their fundamentals and earnings and you have a strong opinion where the semiconductor is gonna be, then I guess you can buy out of the money options but statistically speaking, all of the future events are already kind of priced in by the market maker into the future options. So if you buy December options, the binary events is already priced into that price. So unless you think that the stock due to the binary event will outperform the projections by the analyst and the market makers and just general supply and demand in the market, unless that event happens, you will lose money. So that's why, when you do trade options, when you buy out-of-the-money options, 90% of the time, 
you will lose money. So hopefully by looking at these probability charts and looking at Bollinger Bands or any kind of other means of figuring out based on statistics where the stock is going to be, it can significantly improve the odds of you being successful. One is you can look at the historical data, standard deviation. B, you can look at the implied volatility that shows you the future projections of where the stock is going to be. You can see micro implied volatility right now is higher than historical. That's why it's not 68% chance, but actually 71% chance of stock being between 26 and 38. And then having these long-term conviction numbers based on fundamental technical data can really improve your odds of being successful. So this is IV rank, and, the, and the, so look, we look to the probability of success, which is very important, and we look at the IV rank, and IV rank just tells you, is it time to buy options or is it time to sell options, sell option premium? And again, just to reiterate, if you see implied volatility in relative terms is low, you want to buy options, you want to buy at the money options, because we saw that buying out of the money options means that the stock have to move in your directions before you make money. And you want to kind of do the opposite. You want to buy in the money options to make sure that even if the stock doesn't move in your direction, you still make money. So then the question becomes, looking at the chart, would be, you know, why did you recommend buying 30 and 32 call? Why did you not sell the 26 put? It's a great question, and it all depends on what comfort level you have. If you are traded for a while and you traded options selling the premium, then it all depends on your comfort level with risk and reward. You have to keep in mind, if you sell 26 put, it is much better statistically than buying 30 call. But there can be two issues with 26 call, 26 put. One is that if the implied volatility is low, you might not have enough premium in the option. You know, you shouldn't sell options for a nickel or a dime. But there also the risk reward profile might not be something that is suitable for you as an investor. 30% chance of losing money also 86% chance. So in this case, if we do sell 26 put, you have 87% chance of making money. But it also means that if the if you do have a correction in the market, you might be make you for every dollar that you invest, you might only make 10 cents or 15 cents. But if the stock goes against you, you might lose 95%. So if you if you traded options before, then you can adjust your risk by rolling options to the next months or doing some kind of a repair strategy that you can exercise to mitigate your risk, then you can always you know, take trades that have higher probability of success, but they have a lower return on capital. They have a lower reward. That means if you're taking a trade that has a high probability of success, you have to make sure you trade only a small amount of your capital in case trade goes against you. And you also have to be comfortable with the risk knowing that if the trade goes against you, even though it's a high probability of trade, but if you do have an outlier, like we had in S&P, you can adjust your positions accordingly. Because you've seen here, with the Bollinger Band, we said, well, 95% of the time, you have to be between two standard deviation move based on historical data, but we've had outliers where the stock moved indexed, and most of the stocks moved beyond the two standard deviation so when the market moves against you, you have to make sure you're comfortable with that risk. That's why sometimes selling naked options is not a good idea if you haven't traded options before, and we prefer to do spreads. And then you have to look at the implied volatility and option premium and see if the risk reward suits your profile. So at TradeSpoon, we try to be more conservative. We try to look at probability of success between 60 and 70% and try to structure our trade where we can make you know, anywhere between 40 to 60% return on our trade. And our trade usually lasts anywhere from 20 to 30 days. So just the point of this diagram is that high probability of success means lower return on capital. And we're gonna go through how to calculate return back to our 
presentation where you have to have a written trading plan, you have to always be comfortable with these two numbers. And those are the most important numbers is what is your probability of success and what is your return on the capital and what is your return on investment. So here, just something to keep in mind, if you can structure trades that have higher probability of success, but that means lower return on capital. If you want higher return on capital, you have to do trades that have lower probability of success. That means you have to trade options that are closer to where the stock is trading. So how do you calculate return on capital and why is this important? Well, again, you have to be comfortable with your trading plan and it has to be documented. So we can go back a trade spoon when you were very uh, transparent in our performance. You can go back as early as 2012 to see our trades. And for any given trade that you look, you can actually go back and view what was the probability of success of this trade? What was the return on capital? What strategy did we execute? What was the stock price? You know, what's the chart looks like now? What is the probability calculator that looks right now? And then you can adjust your strategy by going back and adjusting, you know, the return on capital that you're looking for and also probability of success. So it's very important that you document and you have a written plan that shows you how much money you want to make per trade, what is your target gain, what is your stop loss, and what specific strategy you're doing and how do you structure the trade and what was the this, you know, long-term value, momentum value is based on a ranking. You want to have be able to say which stocks do I trade in which sector because ultimately that gives you a comfort level for the specific strategy. So let's go back to return on capital. We went over the probability of success. How do you calculate return on capital? This is an example of a credit spread where we traded TRW and TRW we sold the 70 put and we bought 67 and a half put. Again, just to recap, credit spreads, it limits how much money you make. You know, this maximum loss, gain is 80 cents and maximum loss is $1.70. But it also, you have time till November expiration to be correct. And if you do have a short-term sell-off in TRW, as long as you correct on direction and on the timing of the trade, that short-term volatility will not get you stopped out of the trade. So the way you calculate a return on capital is just your maximum gain over your maximum loss. And the maximum gain here is the credit that you received upfront up front for the credit spread. So 70 put is $1.90 and 67 and a half put, the ask for the 67 and a half put is $1.10. You sell an option that has higher premium and you buy a lower strike to protect yourself in case TRW sells off. So upfront you're getting 80 cents. What is the maximum loss? It's the credit that you receive minus the difference in strike prices. So the difference in strike prices is 250. 70 minus 67 is 250. It's a two and a half dollar spread. Two and a half minus the credit that you receive 80 cents is dollar 70. If you take 80 cents divided by dollar 70, you get 47% return for this credit spread. And again, if you want higher return on capital, that means you would have to sell option spread that is closer to where the stock trades. If you want higher probability of success, then you can sell options that are further away of where the stock is trading. And that's how you can kind of control these two levers. Now, debit spread, kind of similar calculation, but uh, they're opposite. It's also maximum gain over maximum loss, but what is your maximum loss? Maximum loss is debit that you have to pay upfront. Again, to recap, we're buying debit spreads only when the implied volatility is low. And in this case, we bought 155 call and we saw this is FTX. We're trading November expiration. We bought 155 call for $6.50 in the money options and we sold 160 call to kind of minimize our cost basis and recoup 
to reduce our cost basis, we sold 160 call for $3.80. So the maximum that we can lose for this trade is $2.70. It's the difference between the ask of 155 call and the bid of 160 call. So in this case, it's $2.70. What is the maximum profit? Again, it's a difference in strikes minus the debit that you received, minus the debit that you paid up front. So it's a $5 strike uh, call spread. $5 minus the debit that you paid, $2.70, that's $2.30. So the maximum, to the return on capital for this trade is $2.30 divided by $2.70, that's 85% return on capital. So for, that means for every dollar that you can invest, you can make up to 85 cents in return. And if your probability of success is 66%, that means you, you you know you have much higher probability of success than just by trading a stock because you're selling this out of the money option and the probability of stock hitting 160 is low. So the final move calculation is estimated move. And why is estimated move is important? So let's go back to this chart. So the estimated move here, the reason it's important, it kind of can give you, when you structure your stop orders for stock traders or option traders, you want to see again where the stock is going to trade in the next 52 days. So here's the chart of USG of 2050 cents means that from the time the stock was recommended, $29. If you look at the November expiration. So we recommended this trade on September 19. If you look at the option premium for November expiration of this trade that you structure, that means between September 19th and 11 November 22nd, USG will move $2.50 above $29.24 or below $29.24. So having this $2.50 kind of helps you figure out where the stock is going to be in the next, between the date you do the, the calculations and the date the options expire. So it's a great way to predict where the stock is going to be in terms of range. It's very similar to implied volatility. Implied volatility kind of gives you percent probability of where the stock is going to be at a certain point. What is the price range of this, that stock is going to be between now and the options data that you're using? So this is an example where we are using a stock that trades currently at $38. So the stock is currently trades at $38 and you want to look at December expiration between now and December 20, then your question is, what would be the estimated move of the stock between now and December 20 expiration? And the way you know how much, what is this price range? You, the, it's a kind of a approximate formula. You look at the, ask of the straddle, you look, if the stock is trading at $38, let me take a screenshot of this, so I can annotate. So assuming the stock is trading at $38, you look at the December expiration or November expiration, whatever your time horizon is, a trade spoon, we're looking at 50 to 75 days till expiration. And then you do, you look at the, at the money options. So you take the $2.09 for the put, and you take $2.77 for the call, out of the money options, out of the money put, which is $1.51, and you take out of the money call, the bid, $1.64. So you basically, you know, if you're familiar with different option strategy, you're doing add the money straddle and you add in add the money strangle, and then you divide it by two. So we took the $2.77, we took $1.64, we took $1.51, we took $1.09. You add them together and you divide them by two and that's how we got $4. So it means between the time we did this calculation up until December 20th expiration, we know that this stock will move, will be either at $42 or 38 minus four, $34. And that gives you kind of a comfort level when you're placing your stop orders or your target limit orders. As if there is a sell-off and the stock drops to $34, that might be a good time 
to actually buy the stock because you know that you kind of reach an extreme level. Or if you're a stock trader and you want to put a stop order, and if you're already in a position and you want to get out of it, then you can put a stop order somewhere be below thirty-four dollars, you know, to thirty-three dollars and fifty cents. So estimated move gives you an upper kind of a range, and it gives you an idea when to get into the trade if there is a sell-off, kind of buying to the weakness or selling to the strength. So going back to a trading plan, you have to document all of your decisions. And you have to have a strategy of how much, you know, what are your target gains or uh, losses that you want to incur. And on average, professional traders are looking for anywhere between 1% and 3% return on capital a month. So anywhere between, if you can make 15 to 40% return on capital a year after commissions and slippage, you know, then you're an experienced trader over long run. I mean, you can actually have outliers and you can make a lot of money, you know, in one month or two months period, but then that means you took a lot of risk, right? Looking at the probability of success, you took a lot of risk and, you know, you got lucky or you have a, some kind of a special system and you can make that return. But unless you are, but for the majority of self-directed investors and professional traders, that's the capital that you're looking for, the return for capital you're looking for, 1% to 3% return on your money. If you can do more, you can do it over a shorter period of time, but that means you're taking a lot of risk. But over a long run, 3, 5, 10 years, that's kind of the uh, average return you should look for. So assuming that majority of the self-directed investors have a portfolio of $10,000, you should never allocate more than 3 to 5% per trade. And having these numbers is very important, just like if you're trading for a marathon or you go and you get a high school degree or bachelor degree, you have to have a written plan and you have to document your goals and your plan so you can always go back to it and adjust it to make sure you reach your target goals. So if you allocate, you should never allocate more than 5% of your capital to any given trade. And that's why trading options is actually great because it gives you leverage on your capital. If you have $10,000 in your portfolio, 5% is $500. And if you're buying stocks and stock is in its Apple at $100, well, you can only buy five shares. You don't have a lot of leverage or a lot of exposure to the Apple stock. But if you're trading options for $500, you can buy, you know, 100 shares, right? You can buy one contract of Apple and spend $500. And, so it gives you big, you know, one share versus a hundred shares. So options gives you leverage, and assuming you allocate five percent of your portfolio and you spend only five hundred dollars per trade, average holding time is something that you should also look for. Whether you're a day trader and you're looking for short-term signals and you want to get in on the trade and automatically get out of the trade, then it's fine. Then you you know you're looking at minutes and hours. But if you're kind of a mid-term uh, trader, then on average, your position you hold 30 days. And that's what we do at uh, Tradesman. Our average holding time is 30 days. We've been averaging 20% return per trade, not taking into consideration slippage and commission. And this is not our indication of what the future results will be. But looking at the historical data and what we did in the past two years, Assuming that we average in 20% return per trade across losers, losing trades and winning trades, then you can make up to $500 per trade, $100 per trade, 20% of $500 is $100. And if you trade once a week, and there's 52 weeks in the year, or 50, you do 50 trades a year, then you can make $5,000 using options and using vertical strategies, vertical spread strategy. That's 50% return if you trade once a week. So most frequently questions that we address at TradeSpoon, you know, the position sizing, it's anywhere from 3 to 5% per trade. Specific entry and exit prices for every trade recommendation. We provide you, so let's look at the premium picks. Once a day we provide you a trade recommendation. We are, so let's look at Lexmark. So we either provide you stock trade, option trade, or option spread trade. We provide you entry prices and exit prices 
for every trade recommendation, if you're a stock trader or an option spread trader, we tell you what the volatility changes, return on capital, probability of success. We also give you our long-term conviction score of value of eight through 10. And if you're more uh, self-directed investors and you're just looking for ideas, then you can just go to Tradespoon Bulls and say, I'm only interested in bullish stocks or bearish stocks. You know, you can also do this for bearish stocks, zero to one and zero to two. Click and go, and then you see all of the bearish stocks and our ratings for them. Then we provide you not only specific entry and exit price, but also we can give you portfolio rebalancing tool. So once the, the, the hardest part is once you pick the stocks and you create a portfolio, how can you manage it? So if you go to view portfolio and you look at our My Tools uh, portfolio analysis tool, you can create a portfolio using our long stocks or short stocks, combination of two, and apply different models, how to rebalance it, and every day we will actually tell you what your current portfolio is. Oh, let me find a better portfolio. Hold on a second. Let's do markets. Markets. So every day, we'll, the portfolio rebalancing tool will run, and we apply modern portfolio theory. We have a Markowitz or equal weights, different algorithm that we created, and it will tell you what your current quant portfolio weight is, quantity and weight, and what the ideal portfolio is. So you can actually every day to see how much exposure you have to the market. You can see what your volatility of your overall portfolio is, what is your sharp ratio. We're trying to get higher sharp ratio, meaning that for every unit of risk, we're maximizing the reward we're getting. And we can also show you the data of your overall portfolio. And you can backtest. You can stress test your portfolio. You can create a backtest and say, you know, how did my portfolio perform, you know, for the past five years? So how did it perform during market, you know, if we had a market correction, similar market correction that we had in 2008, you can say from January 2007 up until, let's say, uh, 2012, how did my portfolio perform? And you can actually specify what different rebalancing engines to use and what is your uh, desired return. You know, if you want 20% return per year in your portfolio, 5%, 10%, based on your desired return, it will find the stocks that are not correlated to each other and will try to, based on you know past performance and modern portfolio theory, try to find the optimal weights for these stocks. We also provide trade idea tools. So if you're a short-term trader and you're looking for uh, unusual options activity, you can specify, well, I only want to look at the unusual options activity that creates spikes in volatility. My time horizon is all. Click on go. I only want to look at the unusual option activity where they occur in calls. So there's a new, you know, there is a spikes in applied volatility and usual institutional buying and certain strike prices. And then you see how today Micron or Yahoo had an unusual option activity. Three days meaning we're looking at the, this Friday's expiration. 53 days means we're looking at uh, December expiration. And right away, we're giving you these convictions. We're saying there's an unusual options activity in Micron. Long term, we're bullish on the stock. Short term, based on seasonality and price actions, and earning cycle, we believe that the stock is going to be above where it is now. And you can actually click on analyze and see you know, what is the probability of Micron being at a certain price range between now and next three days. And we provide you trade spoon bulls and bear indexes that gets uh, recalibrated, recalculated every day. That's kind of the most common question is that How often do these tools run? Well, these uh, portfolio analysis tool, bulls and bears and chart, that runs on a daily basis. So if you want to look at Micron and look at its seasonality, 
you can actually see this is how Micron behaves for the past 25 years. If you look at the index, and you know, you see how the current year is correlated to the current. So the idea is here is that Micron is currently going to be in this range bound between now and the end of the year. And why is this ranking system is important? It is important because if you're trading again and the stock market does go against you, you want to see how can you adjust your positions. If you're bullish on the stock and you have a rating of 10, even if the stock goes against, Micron has a short-term sell-off like it did during market sell-off. Long-term, you know you want to own the stock. So you can get a sign on the short put as long as you have enough capital to have the stock and sell calls against it. And that's a very popular strategy where people sell puts, they reduce their cost basis, they get a sign on the stock, and as soon as the portfolio is large enough where you only allocate 5 to 6% of your portfolio into a micro, you can sell calls against it. And as long as you have this conviction, these ratings on the stock, you can execute this repair strategy and either get a sign on a stock or roll November options into the December options or do a ratio stress to repair your strategy. But you have a long-term conviction, and if you manage your portfolio properly in terms of overall exposure to the market, then you have higher probability of success. So in conclusion, uh, I want to kind of open up uh, the room for questions. In conclusion, we try to use a trace we lay, try to use a simple strategy, like either trading stocks that you can see on screen or trading option spreads. The option spreads allows you to protect yourself against short-term volatility. And the worst feeling that you know most of the in investors experience is that they are correct on the timing, they correct on the direction, but the, they get stopped out due to short-term volatility, and then the next day or a couple days later, the stock moves in their direction. So if you want to avoid that and not having too much exposure to the market, option spreads, option verticals is the most commonly used strategy, the most simple strategy that you can use over and over again for your trading. We also provide backtesting strategies to backtest your portfolio or look at the seasonality of the stock. And this is how we are coming up with these value momentum indicators, both short term trend and the long-term value momentum indicators and that allows us to have a conviction on the stock and using these quant models seasonality and using the implied volatility that gives you forward-looking predictions we have models that can help you ascertain where at what levels the stock will be between now and the expiration so this time uh, I want to open up a room for questions and see if you guys have any questions. Uh, let me see. All right, let me ask. All right, Michael, thank you for your question. What markets are we trading in? We are trading in US markets. So, and we are specializing in uh, ETFs or stocks. So if you want to look at Apple, We will give you our probability calculator where the stock is going to be in the next 50 days. We also give you our short-term rating and long-term rating. We also provide you with our qualitative research. We have a team of equity analysts that are looking at the stocks. We're assigning scores based on our proprietary scorecard. And this is a manual process. And we look at the balance sheet. We look at the we assign valuation of the stock. And we do competitive analysis and we do intrinsic value analysis. But this is all US markets and this is all underlying stocks and options. So, John, in terms of spiders and futures, currently we do not analyze futures or options. In terms of seasonality, you can type in spider, kind of you can look at the annual cycle. But that's as far as the research we have. So we are concentrating in the US market. We are concentrating in optionable stocks. 
ETFs are a great instrument, but we believe that by using our models, we can actually find the best stocks in the ETFs. You, there's a lot of ETFs that, you know, if you go to our stock focus list and let's say you find Apple, or let's say you run a uh, bullish scanner and you trade and you find nines and tens, you can sort it by sector and let's say Gilead or Teva or Celgen is in the you know, pharmaceutical sector, but you don't want to be exposed to just single names, but you see they're all being rated rank high, you can find an equivalent ETF or an index that has uh, exposure to the pharmaceutical and biotech. Uh, Michael, if someone only sticks to suggestions for your system, what can one expect? We've, we've run a back test for both. We have a premium performance and elite performance. Prem and maybe a young, uh, young maybe you can show the, the offer that we have currently for trading pop users. But if you subscribe for, for premium service, and premium service is uh, where we provide one recommendation a day. Elite is where we provide one recommendation a week. If you run the back test, this is pure. It doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't indicate what the forward-looking results are. But if you, for, since the inception, since 2012, if you invest $10,000 into the stock market, and you allocate only 5% per trade without the commissions or slippage, if you start with $10,000 and now you would, if you trade options. It, you know, we basically have 100% return in two years. And if you do spread, you start with $10,000 and you would have 50% uh, return using, if you trade every single trade without the commissions in, into consideration. So thank you, Michael, for that question. Let me see, did I miss any other questions? Okay, so some of you traded four years, some of you haven't traded options. So it seems like we have a mixture of both. Uh, so this is a great tool if you haven't traded, uh, if you're new to options or you traded options before, I think by looking at our tools and creating a probability of, looking at our tools and looking at the probability, probability of success and taking trades that have high probability of success and only trading our bulls you have a conviction on the stock market if you trade these bulls and you look at the and you provide look at the analysis and you see you trade options that have high probability of success and you really can increase the odds of having successful uh, strategies do you also recommend when to buy, when to sell ETFs, like you did with the stocks? Fabio, great, great question. Uh, the way we would do this, and it's been done by a lot of our subscribers, you can run the scan, and it will find you the best stocks and the best sectors that we have. So for each of these sp space, we find the best stocks in the sector. If you don't feel comfortable trading these stocks, you can like pharmaceutical stocks, you can find an equivalent ETF and it's the same rankings will apply because most of the time, you know, between Teva, Selgin, and Gilead, this is probably 30% of biopharmaceutical uh, ETF. Same goes for semiconductor. We can, we can recommend Micron, Intel, ASML, but if you don't feel comfortable trading and having exposure to individual names in a semiconductor, Sector you can find, you can just Google and say, you know, semiconductor, semiconductor ETF. And you can find, you know, a semiconductor, ET, you know, spider semiconductor ETF that you would feel more comfortable with trading. So here's a spider semiconductor ETF, XSD. So instead of buying individual names like Micron or Intel, you can just buy XSD ETF and using our individual rankings, it will give you an indication of what, where the, that ETF will be in the next 50 days. 
So thank you for that question. Uh, we kind of so it's been the. I think we're kind of running out of time. It's been a little bit over an hour. I want to see if you guys have any other questions. And you know, if you are in the stock market and you want to have access to these tools and have those convictions ratings, but also specific trade recommendations, we encourage you to take us on this offer that Yana has put it in the question box and chat box. Uh, check out our trade. There's no long-term commitment. You know, you you for sixty-seven dollars a month. You basically have access to all of these tools. You have a trade idea tool where you can scale the market for volatility. You can see bulls, bears. You can look at the seasonal charts. And you also can see all the premium and all of the elite picks that we provide you with one trade recommendation a day. In terms of the education, we do have a webinars every week. Every week we have several webinars where we go over stock replacement strategies, how to construct your portfolio, how to trade options. So we have a few webinars, three or four webinars a week, and all of our webinars are actually for our subscribers have been uploaded to this training videos library. We have probably over 200 videos. So over 200 probably videos that talk us about technical analysis, how to execute credit spreads, debit spreads, butterflies, and uh, different uh, other training material. So it's a pretty extensive library of uh, recordings, webinars that are done by professional portfolio managers here at Tradespoon and our partner, MoneyBlog. And you have access to all of these training videos, but we also have uh, upcoming webinars every week. We also have a weekly live broadcast where we talk about market conditions and we talk about some of the trade recommendations that we've done and also the tools. So I encourage you to look at our weekly live broadcast. So perfect. Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Trading Pops, Roly, Jan. Thank you for having me on your event. Hopefully, we guys will see you soon. If you do have any questions, you can send them to Vlad at tradespoon.com. Uh, and you know you can look you know the the you can look at our different prices, but you can see that our regular price is sixty seven dollars, and everybody who is on this event we're giving basically thirty percent discount, and for sixty seven dollars you can get access to all these tools. Thank you, Yana, and I will see you guys soon. <laughs>